father was a minister. His grandfather, Krishna Carl Casimir Wundt, was professor of Heidelberg University, and um, this uh, the, the, the Illuminati order documents that have been we've been able to get a hold of that Raphael. Uh, in the Illuminati is identified as the same Professor Carl Casimir Wundt and is referred to in the Illuminati Provincial Report from Utica, uh, 1782. Now, that is the grandfather of Wilhelm Wundt. So, this method that is being introduced in the United States mainly, of course, with a computer, because as B.F. Skinner said, the computer is my box, and Skinner followed in the steps of Pavlov, who, interestingly enough, was trained by Wundt, not the other way around. So, what's going in now is this method I'm talking to you about this minute operant conditioning. Now, you know it with your dog. You know, you want your dog to sit. Uh, you give him a, he sits. You give him a dog biscuit. He'll sit for you the next time. When I first saw this in the U.S. Department of Ed, I wondered, all these books that I would see in the bookshelves, the department said, what works? And I didn't pay much attention. One day I pulled it out, a book out, and I saw, this is under... Bell yeah, this is some of the big secrets here. Stay there. Charlotte Isserby is our guest. The amazing book, back in print, The Deliberate Dummy Down of America, available at Infowars.com. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Hundreds of nations have fallen to tyranny in the last century alone. This is our last chance to not relive history. As we're finishing off this agenda. American citizens to pay attention. Fall of the Republic identifies the enemies of our nation. The criminal offshore cartel hell-bent on destroying sovereignty and on its ashes constructing world government. Tim Geithner, Bernanke, there are...
Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to InfoWars Nightly News with me, your host, Paul Joseph Watson. Coming up, news on election fraud, Obama's new dictator status and more. We're also going to have interviews conducted by Alex Jones with Lionel from Lionel Media. And Alex will also talk to Antonio Bila about an incident on New Year's Eve where Bila was arrested for trying to defend a woman from police brutality. But first, our top story tonight. Americans cheer Obama as dictator. Earlier this week, President Barack Obama announced the unprecedented step to make numerous appointments to high office without the approval of the Senate. In particular, Obama's appointment of Richard Cordray to head the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau was a direct violation of Article 2, Section 2 of the US Constitution, which states that such appointments cannot be made without Senate confirmation unless the Senate is in recess, which, of course, it isn't at the moment. Now, voices from across the political spectrum have denounced this unconstitutional unconstitutional move with vitriol. Ron Paul likened Obama to a dictator. Senator John McCain labelled it, quote, an absolute abuse of power. Congressman Dan Burton accused Obama of acting, quote, in direct dereliction of his oath to the American people to protect and defend the Constitution. But perhaps the most shocking aspect to this story is that when Obama told the crowd on Wednesday, quote, I refuse to take no for an answer, in acknowledging that he resorted to dictatorial actions to prevent the Senate from blocking the appointment, the audience responded by clapping and cheering. That's right, Americans clapping and cheering for the destruction of their own constitutional system. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Check out this compilation of clips where the audience also whoops, hollers and applauds Obama for suggesting that he take on the role of dictator and bypass Congress altogether. That would have created this commission. So I'll issue an executive order that will allow us to go forward because I refuse to pass this problem on to another generation of Americans. I know some here wish that I could just bypass Congress and change the law myself. I know there's some folks who wish I could just bypass Congress. I can't. Now, I know some people want me to bypass Congress and change the laws on my own. Believe me. And and and, and believe me, uh, right now dealing with Congress, the idea But, but, but believe me, uh, believe me, the idea of, of doing things on my own is very tempting. So there you have it. Not only is the Obama administration flagrantly violating the Constitution and announcing it publicly, and of course Nancy Pelosi says she's, quote, proud and very glad about what Obama is doing with these appointments, but these Obamanoid cult followers are openly urging the president to assume dictator status. That's what the most frightening aspect about this whole controversy is. Now, moving on to our next story, Iran war games set to coincide with US-Israeli drill. Just days after the end of the previous round of war games, Iran has announced that it intends to launch a massive new naval exercise in the Strait of Hormuz, a key oil choke point in a few weeks' time. 
Quote, the newly announced Iranian drills codenamed the Great Prophet may coincide with major naval exercises that Israel and the United States are planning to hold in the Persian Gulf in the near future, reports RIA Novosti, the Russian news outlet. So we're going to have three countries all engaged in war games within this congested geographical area. And this, of course, arrives after the U.S., provocatively sailed the uh, John C. Stennis warship through the Strait of Hormuz uh, at the height of Iran's previous round of war games just about around a week ago, an incident that prompted Iran to fire off test missiles and warned the U.S. ship not to re-enter the Persian Gulf. And of course, this is all ongoing amidst the EU's oil embargo threat and the financial attack on Iran's economy, which has already devalued their currency by 10%. Now, on the face of it, the threat of something going awry amidst two major overlapping war games is, of course, a, a distinct possibility. But let's not forget the aftermath of the last major naval confrontation between the United States and Iran in that very region. Of course, it occurred four years ago in January 2008 when the U.S. announced it had been, quote, moments away from firing on an Iranian patrol boat that had allegedly threatened to attack a U.S. warship in the Strait of Hormuz. And the tape of the threat, of course, later turned out to be dubious. The New York Times reported that the broadcast did not come from the Iranian ship. But what's interesting is that according to Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Seymour Hersh, the incident led to a discussion in Vice President Dick Cheney's office about how to start a war with Iran by launching a false flag attack at sea. The January Strait of Hormuz incident taught Cheney and other administration officials Quote, if you get the right incident, the American public will support it, Hirsch said. Quote, there are a dozen ideas proffered about how to trigger a war. The one that interested me most was why don't we build in our own shipyard, build four or five boats that look like Iranian PT boats, put Navy SEALs on them with a lot of arms, and next time one of our boats goes to the Strait of Hormuz, start a shoot-up, might cost some lives. Now, the plan was ultimately rejected because it would have cost American lives, but the potential for a similar scenario to arise in the Strait of Hormuz amidst all these war games, whether real or manufactured, remains a very real threat, especially given the amount of warships, U.S. warships, that are either already in the Fifth Fleet region or are on their way there at the moment. So given the fact that the Obama administration's foreign policy of preemptive warfare has mirrored that pursued by the Bush administration, the potential for a stage-managed provocation to create a pretext for an attack on Iran during this next round of naval war games is clear. Moving on to economic news now, media celebrates bogus job numbers. Now, we've had new jobs figures out today that were celebrated by the mainstream media as a sign of the recovering U.S. economy. 200,000 new workers were added to the payroll in December, reports Bloomberg, a figure that beat expectations of 150,000. And the corporate press instantly fell about themselves with glee about how this contradicted the doom mongers for daring to suggest that the recovery is in fact non-existent, as many of the guests on this show have done. However, as Zero Hedge reports, the 200,000 figure is completely phony. Quote, enamored with the 200,000 number? Don't be. The reason why the market was basically yawned at the BLS data is the fact that Morgan Stanley's David Greenlaw reports 42,000 of the 200,000 figure is basically a seasonal quirk, which will be given back next month, meaning that the true adjusted number is 158,000, essentially right on top of the expectation. From David Greenlaw, quote, some of the strength in this report should be discounted because of a seasonal quirk in the courier category of payrolls, e.g. FedEx, UPS. Jobs in this sector jumped 42,000 in December, repeating a pattern seen in 2009 and 2010. We should see a payback in the next month's report. So basically, they've had a seasonal uptick of 42,000 members in these delivery industries. Um, that's going to be given back next month. It's going to be taken away from the figure. Uh, but the corporate media has dishonestly included it in the final total to make it look as if everything's hunky-dory. Uh, and of course, we know that 
any jobs figure is fundamentally flawed because it fails to take into account the thousands of Americans each month who give up looking for work altogether. They're not included at any point in the final number given in these jobs figures. Moving on. Steve Watson reports on Infowars.com, Iowa officials deny vote count error, reports as rumor, innuendo, allegation. GOP officials in Iowa have dismissed reports circulating online that there was a significant flaw in vote counting during Tuesday's caucuses and have ruled out the possibility of overturning the results. Quote, Iowa GOP officials have been in contact with Appanoose County Republican officials tonight and do not have any reason to believe the final certification results of Appanoose County will change the outcome of Tuesday's vote, wrote Iowa Republican Party Chairman Matt Straw in a statement Thursday night. Out of respect to the candidates involved, party officials will not respond to every rumour, innuendo or allegation during the two-week process, Straw added. And the statement came in response to claims of discrepancies by a Ron Paul supporter in Appanoose County who told an Iowa TV station that he believes there was a 20 vote discrepancy in the numbers he recorded from his caucus and the numbers that the Iowa Republican Party reported. Quote, when Mitt Romney won Iowa by eight votes and I've got a 20 vote discrepancy here, that right there says Rick Santorum won Iowa. Edward True told KCCI TV, not Mitt Romney. So let's go to that clip from KCCI TV. When Mitt Romney won Iowa by eight votes and I've got a 20 vote discrepancy here, that right there says Rick Santorum won Iowa, not Mitt Romney. 28-year-old Edward True helped count the votes and jotted the results down on this piece of paper to post on his Facebook page later. His notes say Mitt Romney received two votes, but according to the Iowa Republican Party's website, True's precinct cast 22 votes for Romney. A spokeswoman for the Iowa Republican Party says True is not a precinct captain and he's not a county chair, so he has no business talking about election results. She also said they wouldn't offer any interviews on possible discrepancies until the vote is certified. True said there was one other mistake. The Iowa GOP reports there are a total of 79 votes cast at his caucus, but only 53 people attended that night, he said. So we have a situation in Iowa where there's no requirement to show any form of ID before you vote meaning the candidates backed by the most money can have people voting multiple times over and over again. And this whistleblower, as you heard in the clip, said that there were only 53 in attendance at the caucus, and yet the Republicans are claiming there were 79 votes. Something doesn't add up, quite literally. But Santorum's campaign and the Republican establishment have just shrugged it off and told everybody to move along. Now, in this case, it was Santorum that was cheated, but Ron Paul could have easily had the same thing happen to him. We know that last election in 2008 in New Hampshire, an almost identical situation happened to Ron Paul. So as we move on to New Hampshire, which takes place next week, January 10th, with Ron Paul holding that strong second position, um, we need to watch this carefully to see if the phenomenon repeats itself. Um, because we've learned from the past that Ron Paul has been cheated out of votes. So to have evidence of that happening and for the Republican establishment to just shrug it off and for Santorum to shrug it off, even though it's directly impacted him, he could have won the overall Iowa caucus. In fact, he lost by eight votes. If these votes had have been counted properly, Santorum could have outright won. So massive evidence of election fraud, and we'll continue, continue to track it as we move towards New Hampshire next week. Kurt Nimmo reports on Infowars.com. Big Brother in St. Louis, schools plan to monitor student activity at home. Elementary schools in Missouri plan to use wristwatch-like devices called Polar Active monitors to surveil children not only at school but also at home. Parkway Elementary Schools in St. Louis plan to quote, collect data about activity levels and even sleep patterns for a week at a time. It will have the students wear the devices around the clock, according to stltoday.com. And so it's not enough that they're turning the schools into prisons where every child is tracked and surveilled, preparing the kids to grow up with Big Brother all around them, the constant pervasive presence. Now, a little piece of Big Brother is being asked uh, to take home with them, just like the laptops that were taken home by students in Philadelphia with built-in webcams that allowed school administrators to spy on the kids, which, of course, prompted a class action lawsuit. 
And just like the other cases we've covered where social services are kidnapping so-called obese children, it's safe to assume that if these activity le levels, if these exercise levels measured by these wristbands are not up to scratch, then harsh questions of the parents will be asked. Yet another reason to join the growing army of parents who have decided to homeschool their children. Moving on, Obama propaganda front Media Matters attacks Alex Jones and Ron Paul. The, adm the admitted Obama White House propaganda front Media Matters is now trying to kill two birds with one stone by smearing Ron Paul because he regularly appears as a guest on the Alex Jones show. Woe betide. The headline, conspiracy theorist Alex Jones rallies for frequent guest Ron Paul. Quote, though Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul has received scorn from some in the media, he can count on a loud and toxic supporter, radio host Alex Jones, one of the country's leading conspiracy theorists and promoters of the claim that 9-11 was an inside job. And this piece basically tries to imply that it's some kind of dirty secret that we support Ron Paul and that Ron Paul's team acknowledges our audience as enthusiastic supporters of his campaign. It's guilt by association, trying to link Ron Paul with the supposedly discredited, in their words, Alex Jones. But the question is this, if Alex Jones and Infowars are so discredited, then why has traffic to our website surged over the last two years, while traffic to MediaMatters.org has dwindled? Why does Infowars rank within the top 1,800 websites on Alexa.com, whereas MediaMatters.org is struggling down at 15,000? Why are they constantly attacking us? I'll tell you why, because at least we try and be honest in our reporting and what we're about. Media Matters, on the other hand, won't tell you that they're an attack arm for the Obama administration. They won't tell you about how they're tied at the hip with Think Progress as part of, as part of John Podesta's progressive media propaganda campaign described as, quote, in their own words, quote, a war room for promoting the foreign and domestic policies of Barack Obama. This is John Podesta, Clinton's chief of staff, head of Barack Obama's transition team. This is the guy behind Media Matters attacking Alex Jones, attacking Ron Paul. This is the guy who runs the organization whose stated goal in their own words, is to, quote, drive the White House's message and agenda, and yet they claim to be this non-partisan media group. They won't tell you about the $1 million donation they got from billionaire globalist and convicted insider trader George Soros. Now, the difference between Infowars as a media platform and Media Matters is that we don't pretend to be anything else than what we write and speak about every day. We're out in the open. We're proud to be mouthpieces and supporters of Ron Paul because we share the same message of liberty. There's no shame in that. That's why we've got total transparency. And we don't need to hide who our paymasters are like Media Matters because their paymasters are George Soros and people whose mission, in their own words, is to drive home the message of Obama and his White House. So Media Matters is nothing more than a mouthpiece for the Obama administration and the Democratic Party, which is, makes it no surprise that they're attacking both Alex Jones and Ron Paul in the same breath. But again, we're not funded by the Democrats and George Soros. We're funded by our own listeners and readers. And the fact that people are becoming more aware of that is why Media Matters, struggling down in 15,000 on Alexa.com, is losing more readers every day, whereas Infowars.com becomes increasingly trusted and increasingly surges in the ranking because people have seen past the little conspiracy theory jibe and are starting to realize that at least we try to be honest in reporting the facts and we're backed by our own message of liberty, which we share with Ron Paul, not backed by the Obama administration and George Soros. Moving along now, 
Kurt Nimmo, Infowars.com, reports former SS boss proposes global email fusion center. Ronald Noble, the former head of the Secret Service, the BATF, and Secretary General of Interpol, wants to create a fusion center with the, with the ability to track and trace your email. Noble says that although there is no known threat posed against the Olympics planned for 2012 in London, the state needs a fusion center to make sure... Quote, a smart terrorist would know that if the world's attention is focused on something and they commit a terrorist act, it will help them create the kind of fear that would make people want to leave London, Noble told The Independent before visiting Scotland Yard to discuss arrangements for the Games. So again, basically this whole 2012 London thing is a huge police state showcase. You're going to have thousands of troops on the streets providing, quote, security. Um, you're going to have the kind of loudspeakers, conversation monitors, every form of high-tech surveillance imaginable. It's basically a just a big a big plaything for the police state mechanisms, the toys that they're going to use as a routine in the future. Uh, and this is just another aspect of that, tracking the emails. Of course, everything's already tracked through Echelon and the NSA. This is just another means of bringing it out in the open. Moving on to our next story, Privacy Watchdog presses court on NSA Google partnership. This is Steve Watson, Infowars.com. The privacy watchdog group Epic has urged the Court of Appeals to disclose more information regarding the widely publicized close working relationship between the National Security Agency and Google. Epic, short for the Electro Electronic Privacy Information Center, has filed an opening brief challenging the NSA's response to the group's Freedom of Information Act request for details on the cybersecurity agreement that the search engine shares with the spy agency. Story hit the headlines a year ago in January 2010 following a highly sophisticated and targeted cyber attack on the corporate infrastructure of Google and some 20 other large U.S. companies. The attack was blamed on the Chinese government prompting Google to embrace a collaboration with the federal agency in charge of global electronic surveillance. So again, electronic surveillance, Google working with the NSA, all in the name of cybersecurity. Yet we look at every major act of cyber warfare that's taken place over the past two years, and in every single case, it leads back to the US, Israel, and Britain, which are the same three powers calling for all this cybersecurity authority to supposedly defend against cyber warfare attacks. The Stuxnet attack on Iran, New York Times admitted it was traced back to the US and Israel. And then, of course, it was openly reported a few months ago that the Obama administration had launched a cyber attack against Libya when they were in the process of trying to overthrow Colonel Gaddafi with the aid of NATO and the Al-Qaeda rebels. So while the US, Britain and Israel are engaging flagrantly in their own acts of cyber warfare, they're demanding all these surveillance powers in the name of defending against cyber warfare. Again, it's Orwellian bizarro world, and it's advancing with this uh, NSA Google partnership announcement. Coming up on InfoWars Nightly News, Alex Jones talks to Antonio Bieler about a shocking incident on New Year's Eve where Bieler was arrested for trying to film the, a case of police brutality and defend a woman from police abuse. Another case of police treating recording as if it's illegal. Also, Alex will talk to Lionel from Lionel Media about Second Amendment, in particular the case of the lady defending her home against an intruder. Um, the NDAA bill, Ron Paul's campaign, and the TSA. Now, in signing off, I encourage all our great subscribers to continue to support us. If you're watching this on YouTube, please consider subscribing to PrisonPlanet.tv. My name's Paul Joseph Watson, signing off InfoWars Nightly News. America is in trouble. Washington is a disgrace. Government has become too big. It's overtaxing, overspending. We need to change direction. We really need change. We can't afford to make the same mistakes we've made in the past. Mitt Romney's reputation as a flip-flopper. He went the other way when he got paid to go the other way. There is need for economic stimulus. It's about serial hypocrisy. This election is about trust. There's been one true consistent candidate, and that's Dr. Ron Paul. Ron Paul has been so consistent from the very beginning.
he seems like a more honest candidate. He tells the truth about what he believes, whether you like it or not. He's never once voted for a tax increase, never once voted for an unbalanced budget. Ron Paul's plan is bold, cut five departments. It's what we need. When he says he's going to cut a trillion dollars in the first year, I believe it. If you don't like how things are going and you're tired of politicians, he's something different. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Is the one we've been looking for. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message. Welcome back. It is the Friday edition of InfoWars Nightly News. I want to thank Paul Watson for kicking off uh, the news with the uh, news section this evening. I'll also have some other news stories I'm going to cover uh, at the uh, end of, of tonight's uh, broadcast. Uh, we're joined by Lionel, syndicated radio host, of course, has a very popular daily TV show uh, in New York City where he covers many of the issues that we do. And by the way, is getting top ratings in the process, showing people are hungry for the truth. And then uh, Antonio Bueller, who first got local attention in Austin, now national attention, for being arrested by Austin police for photographing them brutalizing a woman. Uh, he's a West Point grad, uh, Army Ranger, um, you know, honorable career, and uh, he basically got set up by them once they arrested him, has been charged with a whole bunch of stuff. So he's going to be joining us in studio coming up in the next interview we're going to do after we've talked uh, to Lionel. And, and to, to try to cover Lionel's bio, uh, we, we would burn all our time we have with him this evening, uh, but he was uh, also a, a prosecutor for a while, and he's a lawyer, so he has a great constitutional um, uh, understanding, but more importantly, a human nature understanding. As a prosecutor, he's seen what's really going on in the world, not the false reality that uh, most of the TV shows uh, are presenting to us. And I, I thought, man, we got to get Lionel on uh, because uh, I, I knew who he was, but then I got a chance to really meet him when he introduced me as last year's keynote speaker uh, at the uh, Talkers uh, Magazine event in New York. And then since I've had him on four or five times, he's one of our most popular guests. But uh, here he is on his virgin appearance on the nightly news uh, and his first appearance of 2012. You can tell I'm a talk show host. I just keep talking and talking and feel like I have to keep talking. Uh, but Lionel, great to uh, have you here with us, sir. Oh, exalted Jones. Quosque tandem abutere Catalina Partia de Nostra. Happy New Year, my good friend. Happy New Year to you. I don't speak Latin, but I'm sure that was nice. Wow, so much is going on. I mean, I feel like I'm in the twilight zone, but, but, but a twilight zone within a twilight zone. Like, somebody living in the twilight zone, what would it take for them to then think, this is like the twilight zone? You see what I mean? It's like twilight zone squared. Every single day that I listen to you, every single day, I think, well, I've heard everything. And then you'll start off, just today you were talking about interspecies breeding. I mean, you're thinking to yourself, this can't be. You know, what is he talking about? And then, then you always say, but here is the citation. Alex, a couple of things, first of all, I'm, I'm just thank you for having me on. I'm honored, honored as always. I wrote a piece, I have a, a website where I, I do a podcast every day at lionelmedia.com. And Dr. Paul has been a, a favorite of mine, not Dr. Paul per se, but the message of Dr. Paul. Since I've been in talk radio 23 years, I had on the late great Harry Brown, libertarian, and I have always been a strict adherent to the Constitution. Not because I'm quirky, not because I'm a fan of it, but it is the, the absolute undergirding, the foundation of this country. And a couple of things I mentioned on this current podcast at LionelMedia.com and my Twitter, for whatever it's worth, is at Lionel Media. I have a picture of Dr. Paul and the great D's. I love the illustrator D's, who was just fantastic. But at the bottom of this, I want people to note, there was a YouTube that I did last night about this woman in Oklahoma who successfully defended herself under fundamental, natural, God-given, just natural law by using two firearms, a firearm to defend herself in her home, her heart to defend herself and her baby. And yet, this is probably the most staggering example of how many people successfully defend themselves to ward off felonies. I saw this as a prosecutor. Gary Kleck talked about it. John Lodd talked about it. And the professional left, the anti-gun media, as you well know, Alex, does everything in its power to subvert to, to, to hide this particular news. So before we get on, I just want to invite people because this is an important message 
There are people out there who use what you might call assault weapons and high-powered weapons to successfully defend themselves. What do the professional left and the anti, I hate to use these, these, these code words, but- The victim sure. disarmament crew acts like it was illegal that people were trying to break in with knives to steal her medication, which she's, and she's with her baby. Uh, and so they say, indict her, and they have the shocked headline, teen widow who shot dead home intruder who wanted her dead 58-year-old husband's meds won't face charges. They act like it's amazing that she's not in trouble. And what's also interesting to note is I don't know what these people would have suggested that she should have done to confront this fellow with a hunting knife, to use her feminine wiles, to disarm her with her rapier wit. Look, I'm telling you, I am by a native Floridian, second generation. In Florida, too, because we get a lot of jokes about Florida, was absolutely ahead of the curve when it came to allowing carry permits. I had one for years and crime dropped. I don't want to get off too much on that, but this is something though, that it is not a, a conservative issue, a left issue. It's not about hunting. Our own Mayor Bloomberg is doing everything in his power to, to disarm, and not just him, but a lot of people. But the idea of protecting your family of yourself. She was in her home. And the very fact that there are people, Alex Jones, on this planet who want to debate the legitimacy of her defending her baby. I, 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 she wasn't out robbing anybody. She used a firearm to successfully keep these people. As one well, I mean, there was another case a few months ago in California. They said she should be arrested. You know, the woman calls the police. Uh, the, the 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 person is busting in, you know, has the weapon. Turns out they're you know long criminal history. She shoots him, and then there was a debate about should she have done what she did. And when he's coming in, she shoots him once, twice, three times. She was asking permission, and here's this woman again asking permission. If somebody's coming in your house with a big knife, I mean, my God. You know, Alex, there's a couple of things here, and I and I get, you know, the, the beautiful part about your show, you and I are very much alike. I had a program director one time who says, you know, you veer, and I love that, and the great word is desultory. We're like human pachinko machines. We care them. You say something, and we go somewhere else, and, and certain things will inspire different thought. But this is something that just to goes to show you, and I'm going to tie in Dr. Paul. The Constitution, the Second Amendment, has nothing to do about hunting. The Second Amendment has nothing to do with planking. The Second Amendment has nothing to do with going out and shooting cans off of a, of a wooden fence. It has to do with the fundamental ability of the citizenry, number one, to defend itself against the onslaught of a rogue government. This was the, this is the basis of our country. That's number one. But number two, and you don't need the constitution for this. It is common sense, it is axiomatic, it is obvious that when somebody poses a threat to you, and there are different, I know in, in Alex, we, we can argue, you know, if you're in your car, if we're in a stoplight, was I menacing? Could I have pummeled a man of your brawn and girth? That's okay. When a woman is in her home, in a mobile home, by the way, not exactly the strongest of construction, you can presume that somebody means something nefarious. In addition, I want people within the sound of our voice to ask whether they have a castle doctrine in their home, in their state, whether they have the stand your ground doctrine, because a little bit of law, you know, normally you have to retreat. And it's common sense. You know, the law says, look, if you can possibly get away for your own good and also to event or to prevent. But if you're in your badger hole, there's nowhere else you can go. And honey badger don't care. That's all I got to say. I'm <laughs> sorry, Alex. I have hijacked the show here to four and I apologize. I am contrite, sir. Well, I you're love it when you veer into the Second Amendment. I've got a lot of questions for you, but. You know, I see this all the time, but in England, where they've really expanded on this victim disarmament deal, I've seen cases where a thief falls through the window, the skylight, and so you're then charged. Or where a woman is being raped and the guy turns around and she shoves him 
you know, out, out a balcony window, three right. stories, and she's indicted. Or the farmer has a three-generation hidden shotgun the third time he's right. robbed and beaten up. So he shoots a guy with a shotgun, and, and they vitriolically send him to jail. This shows you have a criminal government that wants to fully rout the instinct of good people to defend themselves. You know, Alex, years ago, when I was in Florida, or as I call it, Florida, which is different from where people vacation, but I mean, we're talking, you know, Hillsborough County, Lafayette, you know, but we're talking very serious uh, hunters and cattlemen, and in Florida is not what people think. But in 1988 or 89, there was a glitch in the law. When they passed this new um, Chapter 790, this new weapon statute, they did not have, for reasons nobody ever understood, but they did not replace a, a statute that prevented people from carrying basically six shooters down the street. So for eight or nine days, until they could call an emergency session in, for eight or nine days in the state of Florida, it was legal to walk down the street with revolvers and holding a shotgun, because remember, the law prefers that you not conceal the weapon. So for eight days or nine days, don't hold me to it, but for a period of time, at least a week, in the state of Florida, it looked like Dodge City. So, <laughs> think, well, you would have therefore seen a concomitant you know, a, a rise in crime. On the contrary, people at convenience stores were saying, come on in, coffee's on the house. Alex, who in their right mind decides, you know what, honey? I can wear my pearl-handled revolver on my hip. I'm going to rob a bank today. I'm going to commit that crime I've always wanted to do. Why? Because the only thing, Alex, that was keeping me from rob robbing that bank, from menacing that couple, was I could not legally purchase a firearm or wear one. But now that I can, I'm going to do something. I mean, it, 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 it defies all logic. But, but I've got to say, though, Lionel, this is one of the few areas where we've actually gotten traction and i've seen the polls people are now figuring out guns really are good uh they really do lower crime and it really is the answer and no amount of demonization will fix it briefly because i want to get into ndaa ron paul yes, uh, clear evidence now they admit election fraud in iowa but we're supposed to just move on but i want to get your take on fast and furious i mean now the attorney general's been caught perjuring now they've been caught shipping guns into Mexico. If you read the fine print in the cases, it's drugs back into the U.S., uh, money laundering, everything. Uh, I mean, is, th is this on the radar screen when you're on television every day on, on Channel 11 or twice a day? Oh, no, 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 no. In fact, it is with me. Now, understand, uh, the great people at PIX11, we do, you know, local news and sports and that kind of things, too. But... The reason why you're not going to see this is that the tenor of this is set by the Ted Baxter sock puppet, cookie cutter, echo chamber, bumper sticker, playbook media. They are defanged, impuissant, castrated geldings. They wouldn't dare bring this up. And I don't know if it comes from on high. I don't know. You're not going to hear this on MSDNC. You're not going to hear this on NBC. Nobody seems, it, it's as though, Alex, for some reason, this is off limits. I don't know who sets this. Now, maybe if it was a different time, but what I don't understand is simply this. Why aren't the Republicans themselves, I don't think it's just NBC or MSNBC or CBS. I don't know if everybody is told, shh, keep this quiet, because maybe there's implications to Bush, Bush, I'm not sure. No, 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 you're right, you're right. Uh, I mean, you, you probably saw this, but we knew there were similar programs under Bush. He just wasn't gonna use it to blame the Second Amendment. It was mainly to destabilize Mexico and shut down certain cartels that weren't laundering their money with the right people. But I predicted about three or four months ago, you may have missed it, that when they finally called Holder up, he'd say, hey, Bush did this too, watch out. He did that, he said, this extends back to Bush under another name, and that at that point, that's when ISIS said, okay, it's now up to the White House to, to, to discipline you if they see fit, I'm done. They, I mean, they said, look, guys, we're gonna bring down the whole house. Because obviously, Iran-Contra stuff didn't end in the 80s, and it didn't start in the 80s. It was going on in Southeast Asia. This is just more Iran-Contra crap. You know, um, Alex, the thing that amazed me in, in line with that 
And I have a theory, as I told you before, in my, my dream job in my science fiction movie is going to be, I'm going to be the psychologist general, like the attorney general or the surgeon general. I'm going to be the psychologist general. And I'm going to affect the collective uh, mentation, you know, the the uh, the, the mental uh, perception of a country, and I'm going to use I'm, I'm going to use tried and true uh, cases like habituating and generalizing. And there was a rule that I talk about it on Lionel Media, and I've, I've said it a million times. If you're going to do something, do something that is in the open, number one, and have it be so egregious, so awful, so amazing, so that you can use the egregious nature as a defense to wit mr holder or anybody says wait a minute are you suggesting that i the attorney general deliberately allowed for weapons to be sent to mexico and then back knowing the lives that what you do is you say exactly what happened but in a way that suggests what are you nuts then you also do this one why has it, do you know that if it ever got out, do you know how many people would be involved in a conspiracy of this nature? People can't keep their mouths shut. John Kennedy notwithstanding, you know, MK Ultra notwithstanding, Operation Ajax notwithstanding. And what you do is you basically say, so if you're ever caught, not that you would, but if you're ever caught um, with another woman or robbing a bank, holding a gun with a mask, and the money, you say, wait a minute, are you suggesting that I would be so crazy as to be standing here with a gun and the money and a mask in a bank? Are you suggesting, and then people say, you know, you've got a point. That's exactly what happened. NDAA, I cannot believe how egregious, that's my word for today. And by the way, Alex, this is the greatest thing ever. Maybe I'm sure you caught this. President Obama said, I am not going to allow signing statements anymore. I am gonna, I, I, I'm not going to do that. Either you veto it or you sign a bill into law and that's it. These signing statements, this unitary executive nonsense, this is gonna stop with me. Okay, so what does he do? He signs a signing statement, but the signing statement doesn't say, I'm not going to follow the law, which is kind of what Bush did with the, with the torture you know, laws or whatever. He said, I sure do hate signing this. I It really pains me. God, doggone it, I wish I didn't have to sign this, but I will. So it's the first signing statement I've seen that instead of limiting the jurisdiction that he's going to apply, he almost is contrite. He apologizes. I'm sorry, but you know, this authorization is so doggone good. You know, for the troops and the country that, doggone it, all right, I'm going to sign it. It's the only, it's like a... Uh, a lover's note, apologizing, signing statement. And when you talk about signing statements to the American people who have the attention span of a gnat, who want to hear about Kim Kardashian or sports or I don't know what. Well, Lionel, we also had him saying that he was going to veto it, then the fake debate saying it doesn't affect citizens, which they did just so we couldn't form opposition. And then... Uh, the senators come out and go, damn right, it's for citizens. We're going to lock you up. And if you ask for a lawyer, we'll say, you don't get a damn lawyer. I mean, bizarre. And then you've got Lindsey Graham going, you know what? It is for citizens. We want you to be afraid. And if you ask for a lawyer, no lawyer for you. Shut up. I mean, uh, pumping his fist, uh, sweating. I mean, I mean, this is like watching Mussolini on a power trip or something, Lionel. Alex, how many times did you show the uh, clip of Senator Levin saying, hey, don't look at me. White House wants this in. You know, I'm convinced. I heard somebody on your show call them fluoride heads or something, I don't know what. But the part of the brain that allows for cognition and understanding, maybe that auditory cortex is missing in people. Whatever that alarm bell is, it, wait a minute, hold it. What do people need to hear about about you know our history with internment, with Abu Ghraib, with habeas corpus. I mean, seriously, what do people do? Now, I gotta tell you one thing too, which I've, I've just got to, just amazing. The thing you you know you have won, I think you said it, or somebody in your show one time said, you, you, own, you, know, you only catch flack when you're over the target. 
Dr. Paul has been saying the same thing since day one. He has never veered. So Ron Paul, all of a sudden, they said, oh, look at this doddering old guy. Look at this avuncular grandpa-like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all of a sudden, he starts catching on. And then you know you have, it's almost like Stalinist Russia or the Soviet Union. You know you've hit it because they say he's crazy. Alex, in this country, that is the greatest compliment. You're crazy. You're a lunatic. You're out of your mind. Because that means they can't respond to any of your issues. They just use these little throwaway lines, and that means you're over the target. You know, when, exactly. You know, Alex, when you're playing golf and somebody says, now, hang on a minute, I've got in my bag here the U.S. PGA golf rules. You say, wow, that's great. I'm really impressed. Or, you know, I'm watching this baseball game, and I happen to have the official rules of baseball. Ooh, because on a sports show, uh, you you will not be allowed to say word number one if you don't know the fundamentals of a game. But under American politics, in our system, if you pull out the Constitution, just like you did the rules of golf or baseball, you looked at some kind of a hair splitter, a nut, some lunatic. Alex, you cannot get into the school board, dog catcher, water control without without swearing fealty and allegiance to the Constitution. And the Constitution is this thing that people either think, A, it covers everything you want to do, or B, it doesn't cover anything. It's one or the other. People use two expressions in this country. There ought to be a law, and that's unconstitutional. And we use unconstitutional to mean that's not fair, or that's not right, or somebody's telling me I can't do something. Yet when you say, well, no, the Constitution says this, and they said, wait a minute, hold it, you're acting crazy. When, what was it, who was it, Newsweek or Time, who said, does the Constitution matter? Right? Yeah, it was Newsweek. Listen, that's a great way to put it, though. You bring out the Ten Commandments, even, or, 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 or you bring out you know, the rules of football. People really get into that, fans, knowing every little thing. They'll even have the books and, and sit there and check the refs. Oh, yeah. And, but, 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 but you bring up the Constitution. I've had police tell me, I don't want to hear that and start laughing. I've seen cases where judges have said in state and federal, don't bring the Constitution in my courtroom. I've got footage of police in my film, Road to Tyranny, at a checkpoint in their own squad cars. They find, the woman says, you can't search my car. This is a checkpoint. They drag her out and they find a pocket Constitution and they start heavy breathing, Lionel, like they found Satan's baby or something in the trunk. Uh, I mean, how did they get it to where it's not only seen as kooky, it's seen as dangerous? You know, there's also something, it's, it's an excellent point. There's something which I absolutely have felt, Alex, since the beginning of my, when I first started prosecuting. The dumbest thing that we do in this country is to criminalize drug abuse and to criminalize drugs. It, 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 it's insane. It is, that's like suggesting I'm going to stop diabetes by arresting diabetics. Or I'm going to stop somebody eating a big gulp or drinking a big gulp and say, all right, drop that Twinkie fatso up against the wall. You're under arrest. Why? Because diabetes causes X amount of billions of dollars. Now, when Ron Paul, they, they say, are you for legalizing drugs? This is their thing. It's like, no, that's not what he's for. The question is simply this. There are some things in the, in the world that we don't necessarily need to stop through law enforcement. People love law enforcement. It's funny, you know, Alex, if you talk about, well, I got an idea. Why don't we talk about more money to represent people charged with laws who can't afford a lawyer? Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. You wanted more laws, right? Yes. You wanted more law enforcement. Yes. Well, then we're going to need more lawyers and public defenders and legal aid. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. What do you want? I want people locked up I don't want them to keep their mouths shut, and I don't want them to even think about fighting the charge. Then we talk about this. What about jail overcrowding? Try this one. Try saying, listen, I want to build more prisons, but not in your neighborhood, or I'm going to put prisons, we can do the Sheriff Arpaio, which he makes some interesting points, but we're going to put people in Abu Ghraib. 
we are becoming little by little systematically this draconian third world militaristic you know it's it's the stanford prison uh, experiment all over again it's the milgram experiment and i'm telling you what's also interesting i was watching tv land the other day with my wife and i was watching andy taylor andy taylor andy griffith show never wore a gun peace officer public servant the guy from Norman Rockwell, remember that? Hey son, if you're lost, I want you to go to that police officer. He's your friend. I remember when I was a kid, I'm 53, I never saw a SWAT uniform. Now, they don't even have a uniform. We're becoming systematically habituated to this idea through this hyper-militarized transition. The police now wear helmets and shields and M4s and Kevlar and magazines and RoboCop knee pad. What are the knee pads for? What, for prone firing? What is this? And then we're getting people who don't want to be cops to help to find that lost kid. Oh no, they want to be a big shot, Alex. Give me that their gun. Give me that bad, yeah, buddy. I'm going to do it. And we're seeing this little by little more by, I mean, systematically, incrementally. And what's happening is that while all this is happening, the country is in a daze. I, I don't understand what will it take. And then recently, when people did finally do something with Occupy Wall Street, granted, their message may not have been the most lucid at times, at least pockets of it. We laughed at them. I was so happy, Alex. And I saw it here in New York in Zuccotti Park. By the way, they made Zuccotti Park seem like Central Park. You should have seen this. It was a postage stamp. There's no, Zuccotti Park is like, nobody even knew where this place was. It's a name. But when people dare to stand up, the first thing people said was, shut them down. And what happened? This was the year of the pepper spray. Remember that fellow walking around with his crop dusting people who dared to speak their mind. And what did Americans secretly do? They applauded the police. They applauded the vanquishing and the, the cessation of dissent. But now, you know what that is subconsciously? A lot of people, we see this in Rome and other tyrannies when Rome was declining, they just bet on whoever they think is going to win. So even though they don't like it, they go, well, I feel good getting with the power structure. Even though it's screwing me, I at least can feel like if I'm going to be raped, I'm going to enjoy it. And, you know, that's pretty much the mindset of what we're dealing uh, with here. Lionel, there, you know, there's so many other issues I wanted wanted to talk to you about, but we're almost out of time. But you talk about Ron Paul just trying to follow the Constitution. Uh, this is the Magna Carta. This was everything that had been developed to try to protect the little guy from gangs of other powerful people getting together and coming and making you their slave. And it was a system to try to allow individuals to develop their own wealth. And sure, we never implemented it all, but it is the greatest ideas ever put forward and did create incredible wealth. And, and now that hedge is dropping. I, I, I think it's important that you're here, I'm here, Ron Paul, and many other uh, lovers of liberty are here because I am starting to see more people wake up and listen. Yeah. But as things get worse and worse, Lionel, down the road, it's important for people that told the vampire, the devil, come on in the house, that, that they'll really remember what we warned them about down the road if this goes the way it went in Nazi Germany or Soviet Russia or Communist China or Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. Because when you start getting a nasty-looking tyranny, like you know, th th this kind of carnivore-type uh, system it, it always gets really nasty so i don't think the sheeple out there that are parading f for this evil uh, they don't have the slightest idea what what their acquiescence is going to manifest your comments on that precisely you know alex there's a there's a uh, this internet phrase have you heard about godwin's law or godwin's principle that yes says every time you talk about something on the internet there there's a certain amount of time before hitler's name will be invoked there's two things i want people to understand number one do not call everything Hitler. Do not compare, do not demean the horror of his legacy by suggesting that every time there's, a, there's an abuse of power, it's Hitler. By the same token, never forget what his regime did. And understand how culturally sophisticated those people were. It started with nationalism. 
Everything that happened to Germany can happen to anybody. You know, when you, you know, one thing that your show, many things that it does, I have been, and I want to thank you for this, inspired to look at history. You'll say something and say, I'm going to look that up. If, if there, there should be two shows, the Alex Jones show and the bibliography. Every time you cite something, a name, a reference, I have been inspired to learn more history, which I did not know. But you got to understand, this was a very, very, this, this, you know, Germans brought us, you know, Mozart and Goethe and, and Einstein. And, and I mean, my God, these are, these, these were brilliant people. So it can happen there. What's also important to understand is that there is something we're seeing also, and believe it or not, I want you to look at bullying. Bullying, now there was teasing when we were kids and there was, you know, any Haskell types and there was busting chops and all kinds of expressions. But something is happening where bullying almost reflects what we're seeing that is being done by the hyper-militarization of police and how citizens are being subjugated, how we are ceding our jurisdiction to people that we pay. Remember, these people, the police, bless their hearts, good for them, they work for us. We're seeing it even at the grade school level. Kids who are taking on this this mantle of absolute, not, not just, I'm gonna push you around, but I'm gonna own you. I'm gonna drive you. I don't want you just to cry, Alex Jones. I want you to kill yourself. And I'm gonna come back, think about it. We are seeing everything in a heightened level. No, exactly, very nasty exercises in power. And I'm glad you mentioned this at the end of the interview because I wasn't gonna have time to get to it. Uh, but here it is, here's the Daily Mail. Hit Star Wars game lets players own and torment female slaves with electric shock collar. We have police now to make somebody give a urine sample, tasering them, and judges in a New York State case ruling you can do that. Uh, we've got all of this where torture and pain compliance and all of it's like a Pandora's box where it's like America is exploring all these lower brain functions and just, and, and, and like if you're a real man, you know, you're gonna get into this and it really is sadistic. It really is demonic, for lack of a better term. And, and it's, it's very sick. The greatest example you will see, when historians look back, Alex, during this uh, part, and again on Lionel Media, I've talked about this since, uh, I can't remember when I started, but somebody somewhere, I just imagine in my movie that I'm gonna be doing as psychologist general, we close the door and whether it's Janet Napolitano or Chertoff or whoever, and we sit back and we say, gentlemen, here's to you, toast to you. I never thought they would put up with this. I never thought, I got a hand at whoever it was who came up with taking that poor guy with bladder cancer and then having him beg and plead not to fumble with his urostomy, not to take this man who had suffered from near death bladder cancer and begging you, please, don't cause the adhesion to break. And when you guys dropped his pants to his knees because he had to wear oversized pants to accommodate this bag, and when you dropped him to his knees like some kind of a, like a cartoon, and then spilled the bag of urine on it, drenching him in his own urine, and then made him waddle across, run, crying across the terminal to his flight, which he missed, and he couldn't clean up until they took off, I thought for sure, fellas, that we were done. But you know what they did? You know what the sheeple did? Nothing. And then when that woman went to see her family to die of leukemia, you made her, sir. I thought that they didn't do anything. And, 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 and Miss USA, when they went in her vagina, and now they're groping small girls, and now they're lying about the radiation exposure. It is a religion of submission to evil, and that's why I only use the Nazi or Soviet term at the proper point, because these tyrants are trying to consciously mimic it, and that's where this road is leading, where we let the worst of us those that want to press on the nerve of power, like O'Brien tells Winston, we're building a society where it gets more brutal. It's about trampling and being trampled on, O'Brien tells Winston, and, and, and that's what they're doing. We, good men and women, have let the tyrants flourish, and, 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 and as our founders said, the only thing that evil needs a tyrant, the only thing that evil needs to flourish is that good men and women do nothing, and now we're letting it manifest. Lionel, look forward to having you on the radio, and a great job over there with the daily TV show and everything else you're doing. God bless, and have a great weekend.
Thank you so much, Alex. Happy New Year, sir. Good talking to you. You too. Say hi to your wife for me. Wow, great talking to Lionel. Uh, we're going to go to break and uh, come back uh, with uh, more news and information. Uh, it's uh, InfoWars Nightly News, and we're scheduled to have a special uh, in-studio guest as well, right along the same parallel of the expanding police state. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Stay with us. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. To call what I did a crime is, is ridiculous. Michael Allison publicly recorded law enforcement in Robinson, Illinois. Now he's charged with five felonies with... 15 years in prison for each count. That's a total of 75 years if convicted. 75 years in prison, and, and, and it's, it's just so unbelievable. Allison could spend the rest of his life behind bars. The 42-year-old is out on bail preparing to stand trial. The crime he's accused of? Eavesdropping. This doesn't you remember Mr. Allison. We had him here on the broadcast. He was facing life in prison for filming police in public. Now in 12 states, people are getting 10, 15, 20 years. But in his case, uh, the judge finally dropped it, even though the state came down to their county there in Illinois and said, no, we want life in prison for a guy with no criminal record filming police who'd been coming and towing cars off of his uh, a garage property. I mean, this is like so absurd. If I read this in a Kurt Vonnegut book 20, 30 years ago about a cartoon future police state of absurdist proportions, it would not be believable even in a absurdist dark satire book. But now it's just here. Now it's happening. Now it's going on. And, and I see these cases every day in the news where people film police, sometimes from hundreds of yards away, and they don't just arrest you. In many cases, they beat you and then charge you with assaulting them. And sometimes they you know, claim that the person uh, physically attacked them, but then others have shot video in a clandestine position and the police get caught lying. Kind of like uh, last year when the cop shot the guy who was in handcuffs in the back in San Francisco and then lied about it and confiscated all the cameras. But somebody on a train that was stopped shot what really happened. So there's certainly a culture in policing in this country now that they're the good guys and, and, and they'll lie about you and say that you assaulted them just to teach you a lesson. Two to 10 years in prison just because you dared videotape them. Now in uh, this latest case that happened a few days ago in Austin, it's gotten local attention. Now it's getting national attention uh, because this gentleman has never been arrested, has no criminal record, is a national and state liaison for West Point He's an Iraq war veteran. Uh, he's involved with disadvantaged children, and they've got a big problem. Uh, he was at a gas station, and ABC News locally has also covered this and, and was videotaping. We're going to show some of that coming up in a few minutes. Um, and was taking photos of them manhandling some women that were pulling out of uh, a car, a passenger. And so they came up and got in his face, and uh, the police didn't know it was being videotaped from across the street. They said that he had assaulted him, but now that the videos come out, they say, well, we mean he spit on us. Uh, and the police officer told him in the paddy wagon, I'm going to teach you a lesson. You're going to learn who the boss is. So we're going to uh, talk about that with Antonio F. Beeler. He has an amazing uh, bio. Uh, he's also a teacher here in Austin, uh, Texas as well. Uh, he, was the, uh, he came from eastern Pennsylvania coal mining town, and he was the only member of his family to ever graduate from high school. Uh, from there, he moved on and attended the United States Military Academy at West Point. He's got multiple degrees. He received his BS in systems engineering from the United States Military Academy at West Point, an MBA from the Stanford Graduate School of Business. 
and uh, he joins us here in studio to break this down. He's also a big Ron Paul activist. That's why most of my crew has actually you know, met him and already knows he, he, he's organized for years the Ron Paul runs uh, here in town. He's an all-around evil guy that taxpayers need to pay for for 10 years in prison for daring to uh, talk to police and take photographs. Antonio, good to have you here in studio with us, my friend. Likewise, it's a pleasure. Well, you're a very evil person here. I mean, I've got all your, your uh, bio as a West Point uh, Department of uh, you know, Defense uh, liaison you know, uh, uh, for recruitment and all sorts of other things. Uh, and uh, now you're in a bunch of trouble. So uh, tell, us, tell us exactly what happened on record because his lordship, Art Aceveda, the awesome police mm. chief who sat in that chair, says that uh, his officers did a wonderful job. <laughs> right, so it was New Year's Eve. Uh, we just came back from a house party. I was a des designated driver. I had one drink. It was a beer at 8.30 p.m., and this is a around 1 o'clock, so I was completely sober. And we were running low on gas, so we decided to stop and fill up before I dropped my buddy off at home. Uh, we pull in, and in between us and the street is a black sedan that's pulled over with a female outside of it getting a field sobriety test. We observed the fact that she was in high heels and she was freezing and doing this field sobriety test. We just thought it was kind of uh, awkward, but nothing to really you know, get too focused about, but uh, they were there, so we just kept watching. I'm filling up the gas tank. Uh, when we get finished, uh, you know, we notice that a uh, cop, the bulkier, uh, dark-haired cop named Snyder is walking over to the passenger side, opens up the door, and the next thing you know, we just hear a very loud scream. Uh, I turn around, look, and she's flying out the door. Uh, the officer yanked her out the car, uh, right to her knees on the concrete. Um, twisting her arms behind her back. The other officer, the light-haired guy, his name is Aborski, he runs over, joins in. Uh, they, they have her arms locked behind her back and they lift her up that way. And, and I've had police do, uh, do this to me in, in Round Rock when I asked George Bush some questions at a press conference they didn't like, mm. where they do crank the arms up, but not even this high, and I still have a, a mm -hmm. shoulder yeah. you know, damage 14 years later, this yeah. happened in 1998, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we've got a photo we can show that you yeah. took where they've got them just cranked all the way up, and you say that they later actually picked her up this way. That's right. I mean, from my from my perspective, that's a torture move. Oh, absolutely. I, and uh, she. Of course, you're an Army Ranger. I mean, I'm mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure probably in your uh, training where they give you to know how to withstand torture, you already knew that. Well, I, I'm, I'm Ranger qualified, yeah, but yeah. Uh, no one, no one's ever picked me up that way. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think I would have uh, enjoyed and, and it. And there's the photo. But you're saying they continue to pick her all the way up. Right. They picked her up according to you know. They pulled her up that way, and she screamed. She was uh, you know screaming and crying. She was in so much pain. She, uh, my friend and I, we started taking pictures. Um, she saw us taking pictures, and then she just begged us. She's crying, and she pr begged us, please film this, please film this, because she knew she she was being assaulted. And then, uh, so they walk her towards the squad car, and then Aborski, the light-haired guy, he just turns around, comes back towards me, and he's marching towards me, and he's asking something along the lines of, who do you think you are, why are you taking pictures? And he gets in my face. You thought you were a citizen. Well, I, mean, I thought I had First Amendment rights. Yeah. So uh, he gets in my face, uh, starts yelling and screaming. I'm yelling and screaming back at him. It's my right. It's my duty. Um, you know, public official, public and We have place. some footage of that as well. You're at the 7-Eleven. Mm -hmm. You're standing back. Mm -hmm. You're getting this, these photos. Ladies begging you, woman in distress. Uh, they're putting her through these different pain compliance mm -hmm. moves. Mm -hmm. Please continue. So then eventually he just pushes me and pushes me uh, in, in the chest area, throws me back. I immediately... Uh, put my arms up like this to protect myself so that they didn't think that I was doing anything. Um, then uh, I scream, you know, why are you touching me? You have no right to touch me. Get your hands off me. Get out of my face. And he's yelling at me. Now, uh, that is official oppression. We have the video where your arms are yeah, clearly up. Yeah. You're leaning back yeah. so they can't even. Now, I saw reports a few months ago where they beat people in fetal positions. Mm -hmm. They say that is resisting an assault. Uh, apparently. So now a, fe now a newborn yeah. baby, they might as well billy club it to right, death. Right, right. Because it's with Al-Qaeda. Please right. continue. Yeah, I never did anything aggressive. I just put my hands up. And he's leaning in on me. And I'm leaning further and further back uh, over the bed of the truck and uh, at some point he just claimed you just spit on me and I said no I didn't and then uh, and then he starts trying to grab my arm and uh, then uh, you know he I was putting my hands up and I was trying to stay stiff because I saw what they did to that female and I didn't want to get broken arm, uh, you know, a dislocated shoulder. You, um, you didn't want to roll over every night with excruciating pain in your shoulder like I do well, <laughs> 14 years later just because well, they wanted to show me they were boss. Right, exactly. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that female was manhandled. Um, so they eventually take me to the ground. The other officer, I, I don't know if it was Snyder or someone else that came in on the tail end of it. I think it was Snyder. Uh, puts me in an arm lock 
literally slamming on the back of my elbow as if they're trying to dislocate my elbow. They want to show you. Oh yeah, they, they, they wanted to, to really hurt me. And I asked them point blank, I said, are you trying to break my arm? And then another guy comes running up to the side and I just thought he was gonna kick me in the face. So I just screamed at him, are you gonna kick me in the face? And then someone says, I'll tase him. And then I, I immediately put my hands behind my back because you know I, I know bad things have happened when people have been tased. And well, they, yeah, they'll, once they can say you're resisting, once the tasing begins, yeah. then the blood feast, mm -hmm. the piranha attack begins like sharks in a frenzy. They could taser, taser, taser mm -hmm. for quite a while right. uh, as they're enjoying the masochistic mm -hmm. pain. Yeah, and, and after that, they pulled everything out of my pocket. Uh, my, I said, can you at least give my keys to my friend so he's not stuck here? They said, no, too bad. Um, and then they put me in a squad car and uh, eventually drove me to the Batmobile. And where they decided to administer a blood alcohol test on me. Uh, they said that I was a DUI. And I asked them, I said, are you just making up claims now? Uh, and they said, well, you were drinking and driving. <laughs> and then I, I laughed and I said, you know what? I'll take the test because I want to see how ridiculous the score is. Um, they, gave, they made me blow twice and then told me to sit down. And I just kept asking, what's the score? What's the score? Because I wanted to know the score. I wanted to know if it was 0, .00. Um, and, uh then he goes, oh, you broke it. You blew too hard. You broke the breathalyzer. And then at that point, I believe uh, Orlowski, uh, or uh, Borski or whatever his name is, he comes back into the uh, vehicle and the guy looks over at him because he knows something's wrong and goes, is this guy a DUI? And he goes, oh, no, 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 he's not, he's not a DUI. And so the guy turns to me and goes, well, what are you in here for? I, I said, because your, uh, your fellow officers decided that they, that they were going to assault a female and I decided to take pictures and uh, question their tactics. At that point, um, I get taken out to the paddy wagon and I have a little conversation with the Borski. And I really hope that there's some audio for this. That, that would be fabulous. But the, uh, the essence of the conversation was, you don't F with cops. You don't get in our effing way. You don't question us. And we're going to teach you a lesson. And Obama launched wars without Congress and the Constitution. He's now assigning judges, pure power grab. They're talking about impeachment mm -hmm. because you don't get in his effing way. Mm -hmm. uh, Hitler said, don't get in my effing way. Stalin said, don't get in yeah. my effing way. Caesar said, right. don't get in my effing way. And the banks have said, don't get in my effing mm -hmm. way. They just take people's houses that are paid for now. Right. Why have a rule of law? Yeah. I mean, who are these cops that want to live in a country with, where their own families aren't safe? Mm -hmm. I know a lot of police aren't bad people, but... They are recruiting thugs now, yeah. and they're trying to recruit people. I know you were in Iraq, but, but the ones that like and enjoy the same type of activities we saw there, and it's really creepy. This has become a news issue now. Uh, how did it become a news issue? And, um, I mean, obviously you're facing you know, two to ten years in prison. I guess you're going to take this all the way mm -hmm. to a jury trial. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I, I felt pretty uh, vulnerable. Um, I'm sitting in jail. I think that you know, my life is going to take a, a drastic detour. I know that I didn't do anything wrong. Um, it, it started out with I was interfering, then it turned into a DUI, then it turned into felony uh, harassment. And I, I knew that they were just making up claims, and I, didn't, I, I just knew a felony was bad. I didn't know what the actual legal code, code was. I didn't know that it was two to ten years. But uh, you know, I, I knew that I was in a bad situation, and it was my word against a bunch of, a co a bunch of cops. So I knew as soon as I got out, I had to take the offensive, uh, go to the media. There were uh, at least two witnesses at the scene that my friend had noticed. One was across the street who ended up taking the video. We didn't know that at the time. After the ordeal was over, he started yelling at the cops. What did they do? Nothing, they did nothing illegal. They were doing nothing wrong. And the cops yelled back to him, you know, you need to keep walking or else you're going to be the fourth arrest tonight. And he said, why? I'm not doing anything illegal. And they said, because it's 2 a.m. on New Year's Eve. The other uh, witness tried to come up to my friend to give him her business card, and the cops stepped in between them and told my friend he better get, in, get So back now in blocking truck. witnesses, blocking right. citizens, yep. uh, having communication yep. with each other. Got to keep the prisoners yep. apart. So, so I created flyers. Uh, my, my friends were helping me, uh, Facebook and Twitter friends as well, and we just started plastering uh, you know, the flyers with uh, the picture of a Borski. Yeah, you need this witness, or they're going to be able to falsely accuse you fair. Uh, bear false witness and right. throw you in the jail, right. which is incredible official oppression. Yeah. I mean, it's the way so many police now beat people up mm. and then charge them with assaulting mm. them. Like we're not humans, like having our lives yeah. ruined because their cops were just supposed to, yeah. you know, l l live like this. Yeah. And, and, and got, uh, 
you know, thank God I mean, um, these two people just came forward. And uh, not only two people came forward, three people have now come forward. Uh, the, all people have contacted me, said that they're, they're going to you know, sign affidavits, that they'll stand up in court, and, and they'll, they'll speak the truth about the uh, police abuse, uh, the, the fact that uh, you know, the police assaulted two innocent civilians that night, and that they uh, levied false charges. You know, both me and the female who was assaulted, we were uh, told that we were interfering with an investigation. Well, she ended up getting a, a public intoxication charge, and I ended up getting a felony harassment charge. Neither of us got uh, interference of an education. Uh, so to be clear, though, you, uh, uh, you told me off air that they pulled these people over at 7-Eleven, mm -hmm. and that the passenger was was telling the driver about her rights and that that's what caused them to exactly. attack dog her. I mean, that's in right. your own words. Yeah, no, so she, uh, her friend was getting out of the car when the cop pulled her over and she just said, don't take the breathalyzer. And, uh, you know, she, uh, her friend goes back to the back of the car and so she yells again, do not take a breathalyzer. The cop, uh, Borski, comes up, leans in the car. I don't know what he said, but he essentially said, shut up, don't, don't, don't get in the way of this, uh, you know, uh, sobriety test. And then uh, she's sitting there and she's just looking in the rearview mirror and she sees her friend is scared. And so then she yells again. She's on the phone actually as well. So there's another witness. <laughs> but if but, a Borsky wanted to get the drunks, he'd go to the cop bars. I mean, he could arrest all yeah. of them. Well, he'd probably I, pull over some other police cars and find some drunks. But I mean, I'm sorry, expanding on that. Yeah. So what happened next? Well, I, I, I think that the, uh, you know, she, the, the driver was black and the passenger was Hispanic. That might have helped a little bit. But, uh, you know, at that point, she screams out once again, do not take a breathalyzer. And then um, apparently a Borsky tells Snyder, he goes, go get her, um, you know, at, at, according, to the, uh, according to the other female. And so... Uh, he comes running around the car, you know, starts talking to her, opens up the uh, passenger door. From my perspective, it didn't look like anything. You know, it's a little innocent, harmless female. So I was like, whatever, uh, this poor girl's gonna get DUI, but you know, that, you know, that sucks, but that's the way it is, New Year's Eve. Uh, but then all of a sudden we see this girl getting yanked out violently. She's screaming in pain. They're twisting her arms and uh, it was just too much. Uh, you know, we, we couldn't just stand there and, and uh, you know, get back in the car and drive away. Well, in the past, coming to a woman, having her arms wrenched behind her um, would, would be called gallant. Today, it's called terrorist. Mm -hmm. Okay, In America now, Abu Ghraib torturing children in front of their parents is humanitarian. Mm -hmm. Putting al-Qaeda in charge of Libya and bombing them is humanitarian. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even joking. This is now humanitarian, we're told. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Peace Prize winners dropping bombs, and then it says these aren't bombs. This is, mm -hmm. this is a kinetic action of friendliness. Yep. And uh, so, I mean, we, we've gone beyond satire. We're now in the realm of craziness. We still have some of our First Amendment uh, left. Uh, what, what's the best Facebook, uh, and we're gonna show this video with the audio here in a moment, but what's the best Facebook account, or how do people find out more about your story? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, my personal Facebook account is Antonio Beeler, but you have to be a friend with me. I, I don't really have uh, many more, uh, much room Sure, for but that. the media wants to contact you. Media wants to contact me. They can contact. We uh, set up a Yahoo account, Austin Police Abuse at Yahoo.com. Uh, that's where we got all of our witnesses to step forward. They can contact us there. Uh, they can contact me on Twitter, Antonio Beeler, uh, A N T O N I O B U E H L E R. What do you make yeah. of, of Arde Saveda coming out and saying that he always does the same thing yeah. now? He says, oh, it's just not clear. Some of it's conflicting. Yeah. Um, well, I, I don't know if it's stalling tactics. They just want this thing to go away, um, and then they'll drop it to make it quiet, or if, uh, you know, I, they're standing up for their cops. But, uh, you know, in a moral, uh, in a moral uh, properly run police department, you know, you don't protect people like that. You don't protect criminals just because they have a badge and a gun. Well, I'll say this. It's one thing if a woman who might have been drinking or whatever stumbling around, I'm, I don't know that, and then you, you're putting her in handcuffs and twist some arms or whatever, but then you said they picked her up like that. Yeah. That that really is assault. That's excruciating. Your arms aren't supposed to even go up as high as they are there. Yeah. Um, well, he, believe, but 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 the fact that he came on the back of the paddy wagon mm -hmm. and told you, I'm teaching you a lesson. Yeah. Uh, and, and the fact that they're ready for taxpayers to mm -hmm. pay for you in jail for 10 years yeah. when you've had nothing but a productive life right mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, I always see how it's veterans and people that are always seems to be standing up to this tyranny and getting in trouble. And then, you know, oh, you're the greatest thing in the world, our great troops. But then you're, you know, your dog meat, though, whatever you get, um, you know, on the wrong end of not licking boots. And I'm not saying all police are like this, but there's a system wide move to protect this type of behavior. 
Well, to be fair, if I was a young black or Hispanic male and I stood up, I pr it probably would have turned out much worse. And no one would probably have heard of it. You know, it's just because of my background that people are willing to listen. And that's pretty disturbing. So, uh, I mean, have you had a chance to talk to the police since then? Oh, I filed a uh, internal affairs report with them, or I tried to at least, haven't heard back from them. Um, um, I, uh, I mean, they, they, they haven't been a, you know, radio silent. Um, I've, I've called them. Uh, well, I mean, it's a big deal yeah. when they're comfortable to say that you gave them felony assault by spitting mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you spit on them? I don't see it on the video. <laughs> of course not. I, only a fool would spit on a cop that has a badger and gun. You know, it's just stupid. Um, you can see in the video quite clearly that I'm backing up the entire time. Yeah, no, he's the aggressor. You're yeah. trying to de-escalate things. Right, right. You know, every time I want it to turn out, they're telling the truth. Yeah. It's like this case down in South Texas where they said, no, we didn't shoot him in the back of the head, mm -hmm. and now we know they did, and now we know that they reportedly mm -hmm. did know it was a BB mm -hmm. gun, and the kid was desperate and freaking out. And, and look, somebody's busting in my house, I'm going to shoot a BB yeah. gun or not. I, I, I'm, I'm not even... I can understand why this happened, but then it's the lying always. Yeah. It, it's the fact that it's just constant lying. Right. And I understand the cover your butt thing, but when that becomes systematic, then there's these abuses of, yeah. well, let's just put Antonio in jail for 10 years. Yeah, cover your butt, but sending someone to jail for 10 years, that's ridiculous. Well, and again, covering your butt isn't good, but because yeah. it always leads to then that. Right, right. And, and, then, and then what's coming next? It's this. It's this. Well, it's, it's just funny. This cop who assaulted me and the other female, um, he won the award last year for the most DUI arrest. You know, they, they celebrated the fact that he had the most DUI arrest. The female who got assaulted, she was uh, arrested for public intoxication. Typically, you get a public intoxication after the driver is arrested for DUI. She got ha manhandled and arrested for that before the driver was even finished with the field sobriety test. So they have everything all, all backwards, and they're just trying to throw people in jail. Well, no, the, the, this is what feeds the government now. 11% um, of Texans are having an arrest warrant out. Uh, meanwhile, uh, you know, the good guys rot in filthy jails. Um, it's, 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 it's really disgusting to, to have seen this happen. You know, I had the Austin police about five years ago, four years ago, Rick Perry had gone to Bilderberg. And he came to town and he was at a fundraiser at a hotel. We had about 100 impromptu demonstrators said, hey, he's down there, let's go protesting. And we're on the sidewalk. We don't need a permit, we're not blocking the road. And the Austin police have lost dozens of lawsuits over this. They know this. And the captain comes over and he says, leave now or I'm gonna arrest you. This is in front of witnesses, I didn't have a camera on him. Uh, and then he comes back later on camera and says, leave now or I'll arrest you. And then a local newspaper comes over and says, did you really say you'd arrest him you didn't leave? He goes, I never said that, he's a liar. And I got so mad at that guy. And they got the riot police already across the street, dressed mm -hmm. them, tried mm -hmm. to intimidate us. And I said, come on, you guys know I'm gonna sue you for this. But they were ready and they were getting their billy clubs ready. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you're really trying to intimidate my First Amendment. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you've got a criminal traitor, Rick Perry, that broke the Logan Act, went to meet with the global crime bosses about carving up Texas energy and shutting down our power plants. I'm just here, everybody else is getting drunk and watching football or whatever. I'm here on a you know, Sunday night, bullhorning this guy, protect my rights. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you know, every time the cameras would walk off, and be like, I'm gonna get you. And it, it was just like, man, you really are a scumbag. Mm -hmm. And I blew up at him, you know, at that point, because it's just like, man, you really are just a thug. You, I mean, it'd be one thing if they thought they were a good guy and abused their authority and were on power trips. It's that so many of them, and we see this through history though, they're, they, I mean, I don't know about the guys you ran into, but, 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 but clearly a lot of them really are just control freak thugs, bullies, that went and got a badge yeah. and a gun. Uh, in closing, where do you go from here? Oh, well, we're, we're trying to get the charges dropped. Uh, they're ridiculous. I think that they should drop all, all charges against all people involved. Um, I think that uh, Austin needs to investigate, uh, fire this guy, and put, uh, throw him in jail. I mean, he's a criminal. He, he attacked people, but right now the focus is... Uh, and, and you're saying false false charge, false police report that you spit on him. Yeah, and that, and assault. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, now these two guys are loose cannons. Uh, you can't have cops running around with guns, 
assaulting peaceful citizens. Oh, meanwhile, you know, in case anyone happened to forget, that same night, around the same time, there's a madman running around less than two and a half miles away, assaulted three women, killed one. So, you know, the, the cops are more worried about people who aren't really drunk and two uh, peaceful citizens who, you know, hadn't attacked anyone or hadn't hurt anyone and were no threat to anyone. Meanwhile, uh, they, you know, someone was just going around and uh, trying to kill women. Priorities. Well, yeah. Uh, wow. I tell you, there was a day and age when police would be embarrassed to be out enforcing and doing little petty money raising tactics. Well, this guy is uh, his official title is apparently something like a DUI enforcement officer or something. So it's not like this guy actually deals with real crimes. He just picks on drunk uh, people uh, who are driving home. Uh, I mean, I had cops pull me over where I only have a, a water, mm -hmm. and they say, that's alcohol, I'm yeah. going to search the car. I'm like, you know that's not. You just want to search my car. Shame on you, man. That's a water. It's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Well, let me look at it. I'm like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play along with you. You know that's water. Well, I'm going to check your tent now. Let's check. And I was like, I'm going to check. I was like, man, oh, the tent's okay. And they're like, mm, what's, what's this? And I'm just like, man... Yeah. Uh, again, it, it, it's being treated like a prisoner. It's the system wants us to think yeah. we're bad and they're good. Right, right. And they're just looking for charges. You know, I'm sure you, I'm sure you saw the uh, thing in New York where they were planting uh, drugs, right? Oh, yeah. Well, Dallas got caught doing yeah. that. So, Tulia, Texas. Houston's been caught. They yeah. all get caught. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, they don't all get caught. A lot of innocent people well, sit in jail. Sure, yeah. sure. But, I mean, most major police departments have been caught. Exactly. Framing people, right. running the drugs. Right, right. I mean, hell, the Justice Department ships the guns into Mexico and the, and the drugs back in. Well, we're going to uh, let everybody make their own decision watching this video that luckily your friend shot from across the street as what, we go out here. my friend? Random, random citizen doing the right thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm just a, a good Samaritan. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, and, and thanks to you putting flyers up. You know, that's what's really turning the, turning the uh, tide here is that citizens have cameras, mm -hmm. and that's why they're trying to put people in jail. Have you heard about them trying to put people in jail for life for filming cops? Yeah, I, I, I remember following a case in Maryland that was pretty disturbing. Oh, they were filming cops beating people, the riot police from like 100 yards away, yeah. Rob Dew got arrested on a hilltop videotaping police beating college students for no reason. I believe it. Uh, at, at the G20, and the G20 had ended, and then they just went to the college at night at like 8 o'clock at night where the people were in part eating hamburgers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like them chasing women and knocking them off bicycles, and Dew's up on a hilltop. He's suing them, by the way. Uh, Dew's up on a hilltop videotaping. They come to him and they say, well, we know you're not violent, but you're going to go to jail. I mean, it's just like we're just going to, like, catch more slaves. Yep, yep. All right, well, uh, we're going to uh, end the show right here. We're going to go out with the raw video, with audio, and let folks make their own decision about this. But I uh, sure hope that uh, you can continue to be a productive uh, member of society and taxpayers don't have to pay for you uh, in jail for 10 years. But who knows? Maybe we are the bad people. Maybe he does need to go to jail for 10 years. Maybe that's what America is going to be all about. Half of us will be jail guards. The other half... Uh, we'll be in jail. We have the biggest prison population, not just per capita, but period, worldwide. More than China with 1 billion, 200 million. All right, that was a big jumbo transmission. I want to thank Paul Watson for doing the, uh, the news at the beginning. And I'll be back this Sunday, 4 to 6 on the radio, and back Monday, 11 a.m., and back Monday with InfoWars Nightly News. Great job, the crew. Great first week of uh, the new year here with InfoWars Nightly News. I want to thank all of you that are subscribers at PrisonPlanet.tv. You pay the way for all the millions that watch this each week uh, online. And we're certainly uh, waking people up. As tyranny gets worse and worse, that's the time to be speaking out because people are finally listening. God bless you all.